Well, we've done a, a techniques section on winter trees. Uh, so we're going to follow that up now with uh, a summer tree and an autumn tree. Um, basically, I'm going to be using the dry brush technique. This is a good one for using dry brush technique so that we're able to get that bit of hit and miss effect where, where we get gaps in the foliage that you can see the, uh, the branches. So um, I've, I've got a, a, just a couple of uh, rough drawings with not a lot of detail because it's all about the paint in this. You, we, you decide where to put the branches and how many to put in, etc. Uh, when you've got some paint on. I've got a number 10 brush. So we'll mix a bit of colour um, for, this, for the summer tree. So we want a nice bright green a uh, good combination for that is and i've used this again and again in paintings not too thin not too watery uh, it's aureolin and cobalt blue and a little bit of raw sienna just so that it's not such a lime green it just makes it slightly more uh, olive and then we want a, a dark green uh, and for that one i'm going to take aureolin again And this time put ultramarine blue in, which goes a lot darker because ultramarine is a richer, darker blue than cobalt. Uh, but it actually looks too blue and a good one for calming it down and darkening it at the same time is some burnt sienna. OK, so let's the way that you, where you position the lighter green and the darker green depends on the uh, direction of the light so let's just imagine for both these examples we've got the light coming from the right uh, and i've got a number 10 brush and obviously the size of brush you'd use would depend on how big this tree is uh, in your in the particular painting you're doing but for this sort of size I, this is about maybe three and a half inches tall about four inches across um, so a number 10 is ideal. Again, this technique requires some rough paper. And this is Arsh, 300 pound knot. But as I've said before, that, that's, whilst that isn't a rough paper, it's got a really good texture to it. Um, and I've got my thumb at one side of the handle and four fingers at the other side so that I can get the flat of the brush on the paper rather than dabbing with the point. And the shape is, it's roughly, the shape is roughly a, a semicircle. So let's, let's get that. The, the foliage should be more broken towards the edge of the tree and more dense towards the centre of it. So you can press on a bit more, deposit more paint in the centre of it and allow your brush to run out of paint, get a bit lower on paint as you get towards the edge and that's the basic shape of the tree uh, something to avoid i see this when i'm teaching this technique in a live situation something that happens quite a lot is people um, dab with the brush like that they print with it whereas it's more of a, a scumble if you like a skidding across the paper in a, a, almost in a random shape to get that uh, tree-like shape and then i'm going to get the dark green you need to get the dark green in while the light green is still damp and let's we can float that in getting the darker color over to the left hand side away from the light and then lightening lightening the stroke when i get over that side so that there's more dark on the left and i can i can strengthen up the dark just a bit more still using a a dry brush method back strengthen that up a bit more emphasizing that towards the left because the light's coming from the right you could put a little bit of the dark underneath because whichever side that's at it's in the shade let's put a little bit there I, I, I can get a smaller brush now I've got a number two brush make sure it's clean uh, and you can enhance that with a few little extra bits of the dark green now that's that's drifted together quite well actually you can sometimes uh, encourage it to blend 
by going back to the lighter green, but it didn't really need it. I think that's blended quite well. Um, bear in mind though that you have to be quick. You have to go in with the dark green while the light green is still damp so that you don't get like two halves to a tree and, and the merge and blend. So it is essential to have the colour mixed and ready before you start. Um, and so that, that's about the planning, you know, what colours you're going to need. Sometimes a little touch of lemon will in help, help to, and this is neat lemon yellow, this will help to make the light side even lighter by maybe a few leaves, picking out a few leaves that are catching the light. And this, this exaggerates even more so the difference between the light side of the tree and the dark side. And something else to observe as well that's, 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 that's very important is your dark green still has to have the light green underneath it. If you paint the light side with light green and the dark side with dark green, which you might think that's the way to do it, then it'll look like just the tree changes colour rather than actually becoming denser and darker because it's not getting the sunlight. So you do need that, that light green over the whole thing and then you put the dark green onto that uh, dark side of it. Okay, maybe just, maybe I could just, I'm fiddling a bit now really, but maybe just I could strengthen that dark side just a bit more and underneath there. Now, that, that you can really go on to the next stage without uh, waiting for that to dry. And I'm going to get just a bit of light on the tree trunk. I'll take a bit of, I'll take a bit of raw sienna with a touch of burnt sienna. Uh, and I want a bit of dark brown as well for the branches and the shaded area of the trunk. That's burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. So, I need a bit of tissue to clean the brush. And the number two brush is ideal for this, but if you were painting a bigger tree, you'd probably want the number four. Um, okay, and then I'm painting that. I'm painting that light on the trunk. It sounds like a helicopter just gone overhead. Okay, now again, Bear in mind where the light's coming from. It's coming from the right, so the, the left hand part of the trunk is in shadow. Apart from here, where, where you start to lose the trunk in the foliage, it's all in shadow. Okay, now sometimes you might need to just dampen your brush and encourage those to blend. Uh, and then where you get Again, that branch there, you see, when, it, when we lose sight of it in the foliage, it's, it gets, it's darker. And then where you get little glimpses of the foliage, and, and these are different on every tee, every time you paint it, it'll be different. You now got to look for places where there's sufficient gap in the foliage for you to see a little bit of branch detail. Now, if the foliage is still damp, that can help actually because it means that this will soften into the damp parts but you'll get a harder edge to depict the branch where you're crossing the dry paper. And don't overdo it, it's got to be that just little areas where you're glimpsing the branches rather than, it, it can't, if you do too many branches now it can look like you've painted a winter tree with a summer one behind it. So it's got to be just now and again where you might glimpse a branch and then you would lose it in the foliage. And that, I'd, I'd say that's maybe a little bit of blending there. And I think a touch of lemon on the brush, where the, where the trunk disappears into the greenery there, it looks a little bit like the trunk is in front of it and we need to take it into the greenery. A little bit of lemon can do with, can help with that and just make it look as though it disappears up into that foliage. So that's a summer tree. Very similar, uh, very similar approach with an autumn tree but with different colours. So let's get some, let's get some nice colour for this. I think for, for the golden side of the tree where the autumn colours are catching the light Let's get some Oriolin and Burnt Sienna 
Uh, and then for the for the side that's in the shade, I think what we want for that's more of a brown. So if we if we take some burnt sienna with a bit of no, not a lot of ultramarine, but you're not trying to make a really dark brown or a black. It's probably like a for want of a better analogy, like like milk, not plain chocolate, that would be just a bit too dark, more like milk chocolate. Uh, and that is the burnt sienna and uh, a bit of ultramarine blue. Again, you've got to get, you've got to have the colours ready because when I start painting them, I've got to get the dark colour in while the lighter colour is still wet. And also, in the, sa the same as we did with the green, you need the lighter colour over the whole tree. And that way, it'll look like a shaded side at the left rather than just a tree that's changed colour. So let's, let's get that nice rich autumn colour. Again, it's not, it's, not, it's not printing like that, it's scumbling like that. You, put, you start in the middle because it, when your brush is wetter, it'll deposit more paint. And as you work towards the edge and your brush gets a bit drier, that you'll, you'll more easily achieve that broken foliage. Okay, and again it's scum, it's keep the brush moving, scumbling about. You don't want to be able to see the shape of the brush in the finished painting. I think that's okay. I'm going to a smaller brush, uh, a number six for the brown, for the darker side of the tree. And let's get straight in with that. Maybe a bit too much on my brush there. And that's the, the darker side. Now, of course, this dark brown immediately becomes diluted when it gets in with the orange and less dark, but that's okay, because if you mix it dark enough, you'll have allowed for that. I've maybe been a little bit heavy handed there. I've blocked out the light a lot there. I wish I'd got a bit more white. Let's just try something. See if we can take a bit off. Get some more white paper. And then dry brush that. That's it. And we leave a few gaps. So you can, you know, if, if, if you spot what's going wrong early enough, you can usually do something about it. Uh, I'm going to make the dark brown now just, just to emphasise the side that's facing away from the light, the left hand side. I've made the dark brown just a little bit stronger by adding a touch more ultramarine. But, and then again, the lower part is in shade anyway, whichever side it's at. Um, we'll just do a bit of blending with that number two brush. Now you can, in the same way as they did in the last one with a number two brush, you could use lemon yellow for a few highlights, but this time let's try adding a bit of burnt sienna to it. And we can just add a few highlights to that right hand side. Maybe to pick out a few little leaves and things where the light's catching them. Maybe a bit of orange in there to blend them in. And then I can, I can put a bit more orange in and I can do the same thing now with the dark brown to enhance the darker side. Then just try a bit of dry brushwork with it. And I think maybe a touch more of that lemon yellow with burnt sienna. Okay, now the same principle.
applies to the tree trunk, we'll get some raw sienna and burnt sienna. For the whole of the trunk, again the shadow on the trunk should still have that lighter colour underneath it. Need to mix a bit more dark brown, burnt sienna and ultramarine. So the dark side of the trunk is this one, is this left hand side. Again the trunk is all dark where it disappears under the foliage. The branches become dark as well. Maybe it's a bit too much dark in that so I can put a bit more life back into it by adding a bit more of the light colour. Uh, let's get some more dark brown and then again the same applies you look for one or two places where you would see a bit of branch work supporting all this foliage. A bit too obvious that. That's it. Now I've not been quite as successful with this one in that I've not got quite as many gaps to see the branches through but that doesn't particularly matter because so long as I don't paint them over the foliage anyway just to get some more branches in. Now we can go into there and then just using a little bit of the orangey colour let's make it blend at that point so it really gives the impression that the trunk is disappearing out of view uh, amidst all that uh, all that foliage. Um, I think that's I think that's about right. So we'll get those dry and have a look at them. So hopefully you get the idea with that. It's uh, it's all down to that dry brushwork and getting that broken effect, which is a lot more sparse and a lot more broken towards the edge of the tree and more dense in the centre, which is as it should be. The key to doing that is that when you've charged up your brush, start in the middle and work out towards the edge. Don't start at the edge because you'll tend to put a big blob on the paper because your brush has uh, got quite a lot of paint on it. And as you work towards the edge and the brush gets drier, your, your marks become uh, a bit more broken and allow us to see the light through the gaps in the foliage. Um, an another tree that uh, I often come across in paintings, it's, it's often part of the landscape, is a spruce or, or fir tree. Um, and I think it's worth me just taking a moment to, to show you the particular method I use for that. Uh, let's look, we could put one here. Um, first of all, let's, let's get a, a, a little bit of drawing. I, do the, I tend to do the minimum of, of drawing with them. And this isn't a dry brush technique, this is very much a, a wet in wet technique. But I tend to do the, the minimum of drawing, just a guide really to shape and position. I do the rest with the, with the paint. Now, a, a good shape for that is, it's, 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 it does narrow towards the top, but it's hardly really wide at the bottom. You don't want to make it look like a Woolworths Christmas tree. So a little bit... So, so not too wide at the bottom, but do get to a, a point at the top. But that's plenty. That's enough drawing. Now, because generally we, we would, we, we, because we want a wet background for this, we might as well wet it with some a bit of blue to to um, look like we've got the sky behind us. But before I do that, in fact, I'll, I'll get the blue first. Let's just get some co cobalt. It's got, it's a little bit grey, it's got a little bit of grey in it, that, but it's okay, that's okay. The main thing with this is to get a good, rich, dark green. Um, so I'm going to take Viridian. I can mix it on top of that previous dark green there, Viridian. Then Ultramarine, plenty of Ultramarine in it. Um, a spruce is often quite a bluey green. That's too turquoise though, it's just not calm enough, it's too strong. So burnt sienna is ideal for darkening it and taking out that uh, bright viridian. Okay, so viridian, a lot of people find viridian a bit tricky, it's a colour I use a lot but you have to learn how to, uh, to control it. So let's, let's start by uh, wetting the background with a natural sponge 
over the whole of the tree and then we'll just paint it a wet background in uh, I can use this half inch flat brush just paint a wet background in with some blue the timing as, as in with actually with as in with a lot of watercolor timing is is crucial you can you can be in too you, you should, I know I'm always saying you should work quickly but you can be in too much of a hurry and when you touch that dark green in it runs like mad and it, it, it disperses far too quickly becomes too soft and furry and too light because if, if the background's too wet it's like adding water to your paint it dilutes it so you need to be a little bit patient uh, and I'm, I'm starting with a small brush another thing to mention is I've seen this go wrong many a time in workshops where the person mixing it just hasn't got it thick enough this is this is probably like uh, single cream consistency it's quite a thick quite a strong paint now I'm looking at that it's still shiny the shine hasn't gone off it yet the the right timing is is not when the shine's gone off it because it's probably too dry then the right timing is just as the shine starts to fade could be about now and I'm, I'm starting with a small brush again start in the center of the tree and work your way outwards because this the center of the tree is more dense so if it spreads too quickly at first at least you haven't spoiled the tree because uh, that's still in that's in the center where it is more dense anyway so let's try that that looks about right and i just work out with the little marks i'm making if you think about a u shape like that because that the branches turn upwards towards the light that will usually work well so let's get and then it's just a case of thinning out your mark not paint a triangle at the top you just thin out the marks until you put in the tiniest little dot at the top now this brush is probably too thin to do the whole tree another thing to, to, to look at with this is leave plenty of spaces between the, the pieces of foliage because if you don't it gets it just gets too heavy and thick it just becomes a big dark green triangle I think now we'll go to a bit bigger brush I've got a number six here charged up with paint Still got a good point though, so even though I can make bigger marks for the more dense lower foliage, I can still get the mark quite fine at the edge there. Now I'm not going to go all the way to the ground, we'll leave a bit of gap where we can see the, the trunk. Don't make it too symmetrical either, can you see how I might go out that far with one branch, not quite as far at that side but on the next branch I'll come a bit further out at that side and less so at that so it, overall it balances up without looking too perfectly symmetrical look at the gaps look sometimes at the gaps between your foliage they're irregular as well but there's a there's a basic shape happening maybe I've not got quite enough foliage lower down make it a little bit more dense there plenty of dark green in don't be afraid of this rich dark green in fact I could perhaps now go back to the number two brush to make sure that the branches towards the edge the foliage is much thinner and more broken yeah I think that should that should work well okay now unlike these trees because the whole of the background is wet I can't start painting trunk and branches because I'll just uh, I'll just end up with a soft furry mess so we need to just a uh, little bit there I think but we need to just leave that now to dry so that's okay uh, just to check to make sure that my trunk is still growing up through the center of the tree and it isn't as I've painted that I've tended to, I've moved a little bit over to the right so I may have to just alter the trunk slightly and bring it to the yeah bring it to the right like that okay now it, it will have a light and dark side but as the trunk's quite a lot narrower it's, it's nothing like as noticeable but we still want some raw sienna with a bit of burnt sienna and some rich dark brown so let's assume the light's coming from the same direction and we put in some 
raw sienna and burnt sienna. And then the dark. Now the dark, the, the trunk, like the other one's going to be all dark at the area immediately below where it gets lost in the foliage. And then you can do a bit of blending, damp clean brush. Uh, and then it's just the dark brown, the burnt sienna and ultramarine. And look for one or two places where you'd get another glimpse of the trunk going up through the middle of the tree. Don't paint the whole trunk all the way up because that would look like it was in front of it. It's got to appear as though you're just glimpsing it in the irregular gaps in the foliage. And it's not just the trunk as well. You might see a few branches that support this foliage just coming out across there. Just glimpses of them now and again. Um, probably more noticeable a bit lower down, but again, don't get, don't do too many, don't get carried away. That's probably enough because most of the time the branches are going to be hidden by the foliage that they're supporting. But I think, I think that that's plenty of branch work on it. I think that works well. Sometimes if, if the foli if the branches and trunks look like they've been added on, like they're in front, you need to go back. To, that's not too bad to get away with that. But you, if that does happen, you need to go back to the dark green and maybe do a little bit of work to dissolve them into the foliage. Okay, so that's a fir tree or a spruce.